Hi, it's Anne, and thanks for stopping by. This is not the day that I usually publish, but I, I realized with a jolt a few days ago that Junk Journal January is going merrily on every day, and it's almost the end of the month, and I've done nothing other than look at the list and go, oh, that looks like fun. And um, I've seen some great videos that other folks uh, um, have been doing, and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to jump on the bandwagon, even though it's late in the game, and I'm going to put out a few extra videos, and uh, I'm certainly not going to do the whole month. But I'm going to I'm going to start with uh, the 22nd, even though we're past the 22nd, because I was really intrigued by this notion of having a bookshelf depicted in um, in our junk journals, and it's a wonderful idea for a prompt. I am going to be using these branding strips that come on the edges of scrapbook paper and other kinds of, uh, of decorative paper. And I'm going to show you what inspired me to do this. I haven't seen anybody else's bookshelf uh, video, so maybe somebody else has already done this. But the first thing that popped into my mind was, whoops, sorry, I really gave you a whack there. Um, was this old bag, <laughs> a little tote bag that I made uh, maybe 10 years ago, eight or 10 years ago, and it is really disreputable and it needs amending. I mean, look at how, you know, I made this out of old curtains. Um, but what I used for this motif, and I actually made it to take to my book club years ago, um, I made this sort of what I hoped uh, could be perceived as a bookshelf sort of design uh, in applique. And I use little piece, scrap pieces of fabric, but to, to simulate the titles for the on the spines of these books, I used uh, the selvages, the, the, the manufacturer's um, uh, imprints on their um, uh, on on the bolts of fabric and you know we all have those if we have fabric around but I just went in and lifted uh, uh, clipped out some of that text on some of those selvages and applicate it down and I have really enjoyed using this bag it uh, it needs a wash <laughs> it needs a trip through the washing machine and uh, it needs a, a trip through my sewing machine to uh, uh, to mend some of these uh, lifting up appliques but that's sort of the inspiration for what I want to do with my journal pocket. I want to make a, a, a full size, full page size pocket uh, to depict a bookshelf. And I'm kind of going to do the same thing as I did with my tote bag, only I'm going to use these end pieces from various uh, pieces of scrapbook paper. There's just interesting, interesting text there, and we usually always cut that off and throw that away. But I thought, yeah, I never really thought about using the paper branding strips, but we're going to give that a try. Now, you do not need to uh, sit and watch me deal with all these fiddly, fiddly little pieces. So what I'm going to do is pause the video. I'm going to do a bunch of cutting, and then I'm going to get started on it and um, uh, and come back because uh, I want these junk journal January uh, uh, videos to be to be a little bit um, uh, more brief and to the point than my uh, uh, than my regular routine. So I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so here's our book titles for our little books that are going to be on our bookshelf. Uh, I've set up just a couple of brown strips of paper to make the shelves. And I've uh, harvested all of these off of the branding strips. I think these could all be very nice book titles. I had to laugh this one date night. I thought, oh, it's a romance. But <laughs> the scrapbook paper I took it off of, how in the world is that date night? I mean, it should be called Grandma's Tablecloth or something. And even the other side, oh, I, don't, I don't know. I just don't know what says date night about this. Um, but anyway, I have uh, more than 10 book titles here. And uh, I have also cut other just small strips of other kinds of thin scrapbook paper that looks look like they could be the color of um, of book spines. I'm going to put a few together and we'll see how it looks. Okay, let's see if we can fill up this little bookshelf. I had so much fun putting these things together. It was really fun to to get out those 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 pieces those scraps of um, of scrapbook paper and some of which are really really dated and needed to be sorted through anyway and go through those branding strips it was it was just really fun to pull those off um let's begin um i think i want just like we do at home we usually have our bigger volumes on the lower 
the lower level, but I don't want them all stacked up too neatly because we want to look like this is a, a really well used bookshelf and one that, you know, things are might be a little bit askew. I definitely want to have, want to have one tilting. Um, maybe this one will tilt this way like I have on my bag. We want things to, we want this to look like it's a well-used bookshelf. And yeah, I'll have them kind of close, but I'll have a little bit of that book page showing through. Looks like I need something a little bit taller here. There's date night. Unfortunately, that's two greens that are by each other, but I can take care of that easily, can't I? There we go. I think that'll do for the bottom shelf. And then some of the littler ones will go up top. You know what I wish I had? I wish I had a cat. I wish I had like a, a stamp or a cutout um, of, of a cat. Because a cat on a bookshelf, that would be kind of classic, wouldn't it? Makes me think of our dearly departed Betty. Who was a good, a good girl, a good cat. And she enjoyed sitting on a bookshelf. But look at the names of these interesting books that we have now. Date Night, Birch Hollow. Date Night looks like it's a little bit too, it's either risque um, or it's just too cheesy to, you know, to be at the book club. It's a, a guilty pleasure that you, uh, uh, that you read because, you know, your, your college friend said, oh my gosh, you need to read Date Night. <laughs> then there's Birch Hollow, which sounds very kind of prim and proper. Maybe I'll have... Nope, I'm going to have Woodland Park be nice and good posture there. And then October Afternoon, which just sounds fun. Maybe we'll have that one kind of tilt. We'll tilt that one this way. What was going on on that October afternoon? There we go. Now let's go to our top row. We've got some of these smaller guys. I love this little acorn hollow. Isn't that cute? So that'll be up here. Maybe tangerine. Maybe we'll have maybe we'll have something tilted on this side. Tangerine will be the soldier holding things up over here. I'm afraid little yellow bicycle might not make it. I'm kind of obscured where it says yellow there in the middle. I love the little sketch of the bicycle. But um, yeah, I kind of, when I inked it over, I think I kind of obscured it a little too much. Let's see. I don't want everything going exactly the same way, which is why I had the, the titles the opposite way uh, on this one, because this was just hastily put back on the shelf. I love to create all of these stories in my mind for what could be going on. Yep, I'm going to put tangerine over here so I don't have the red books next to each other. I have known people who have organized their books completely by color and swear that it's the way to go. I tend to group mine for my personal reading. I group, I just group like the literature together, you know, the political, political things together, the history together. We have, have quite a few bookshelves upstairs. And of course, you know, nothing safe on the bookshelves in my craft room because they're the ones that have been deemed appropriate for for the knife. Let's 
There's tangerine. I wonder what that's about. Sounds contemporary, whatever it is. Acorn Hollow. That could be something that they make a Hallmark original movie over. Wallflower. A sad tale of adolescent angst, perhaps? What commitment facing the other way? Yeah, maybe I want... Yeah, I want grateful thanks going this way, too. I kind of want that little bit of, um, of print at the bottom of commitment there. I want that facing or at, at the bottom of the spine. And I suppose if I was being really particular about it, I would have everything up next to each other. But frankly, I just want a little bit of that white book page showing between the volumes. Don't have to be completely literal in my recreation of, of a bookshelf. There we go. There we go. I think that's cute. And you know what I think I'm going to do? I had, I thought I had a little book here that had Junk Journal January on it. I guess I must have misplaced that. I was going to put that down here. Well, maybe that'll be in the thumbnail. Um, that's it, guys. I'm going to bring it in just a little bit closer so you can see some of these sweet titles. And um, it looks like now I have officially jumped aboard the Junk Journal January bandwagon. It's sponsored by Meg Journals. It's really a wonderful, wonderful event. Uh, you don't have to be on YouTube to participate. Just go and look at some of these fun prompts. Even if you're like me and you're late to the party, you can still get on. Uh, you can, you know, just go, through, you know, pick any of these fun prompts and use them as inspiration for your junk journal elements. Even if you're watching this in April, even if you're watching this on an October afternoon, junk journal January uh, is not persnickety about the calendar. Um, that's it for bookshelf. Let's see what else I can come up with in the days ahead. Thank you. Bye-bye.